Canine distemper. Canine distemper is a highly contagious systemic disease caused by the canine distemper virus of the genus Morbillivirus in the family Paramyxaviridae. It is an enveloped single-stranded RNA virus. Canine because the reservoir species is the domestic dog, but its host range is wide and includes not only members of the family Canidae, but also Procyonidae, Mustelidae, and large Felidae, and even some species in Viveridae, Hyloridae, Ursidae, and Elephantidae, and some primates, specifically the rhesus monkey. With its wide host range, there is concern for zoonotic potential if measles vaccine rates in humans decrease. Measles being another morbillivirus virus closely related to the canine distemper virus. Transmission Canine distemper virus is transmitted via direct contact and aerosol droplet secretions. When an animal is infected, there is an incubation period of 3 to 6 days. The virus replicates in the mononuclear cells of the upper respiratory tract, then migrates to the tonsils in nearby lymph nodes. Much like other morbilliviruses, canine distemper virus likes to infect cells expressing the signaling lymphocyte activation molecule, or CD150. These cells include dendritic cells, macrophages, activated lymphocytes, and thymocytes. Given that these cells are responsible for the immune response of the body, infection by the canine distemper virus results in an immunosuppressed state. Atrophy of the thymus is also a common lesion in many pups with canine distemper. After replicating in the lymph nodes, the virus hitches a ride on the lymphocytes to spread systemically. During this initial viremia, the animal gets a fever. Now, the fever that occurs in canine distemper is described to be diphasic, meaning it occurs in two phases. So it gets this first fever along with some inappetence and lethargy, then the fever subsides for a few days, after which it gets a second, more serious fever, which is when more mononuclear cells are infected and viremia occurs for a second time. As these mononuclear cells traverse the bloodstream, they interact with nectin-4 expressed on the basolateral surface of epithelial cells in the respiratory, gastrointestinal, and urinary tracts. This results in respiratory signs such as serous nasal and ocular discharge, coughing, and labored breathing, kind of similar to the signs of kennel cough. In more severe cases, there could be interstitial pneumonia. And secondary bacterial bronchopneumonia commonly occurs due to the immunosuppression and slowed mucociliary clearance. Gastrointestinal signs such as vomiting and diarrhea can also occur. And not much happens in the urinary tract. After a few weeks to months, neurological signs of distemper can manifest. The virus enters the central nervous system in two ways. One is hematogenously, through the choroid plexus and blood vessels. Another is anterogradely via the olfactory nerve. A recent study found nectin-4 receptors in ependymal cells, epithelial cells in the choroid plexus, meningeal cells, neurons, granular cells, and Purkinje cells. Here, they can cause demyelination and neuronal necrosis. The animal may exhibit signs such as involuntary twitching of muscle groups, known as myoclonus and chorea, seizures, and chewing movements of the jaw known as chewing gum fits. In some dogs, their nose and foot pads become hyperkeratotic. Hyper meaning high and keratin referring to keratin. Essentially, the pads become thick with keratin and hard, giving the disease the moniker hard pad disease. A syndrome known as old dog encephalitis is a rare form of very slowly progressive chronic distemper that can take years to manifest. 
Mechanisms that trigger this are still unclear. Diagnosis Distemper is suspected in cases of fever with multisystemic and most especially neurologic manifestations in unvaccinated or incompletely vaccinated dogs. Laboratory diagnosis such as virus isolation, immunofluorescent assay, and ELISA are needed to confirm the diagnosis. And RT-PCR can help distinguish between field and vaccine viruses. Treatment There is no specific treatment. Symptomatic and supportive therapy is employed. In dogs with neurologic signs, treatment is often unsuccessful. Prognosis is poor in these cases. Dogs surviving neurological signs of distemper can have permanent central nervous system dysfunction. Prevention. Vaccination with a modified live virus vaccine is the best way to prevent. This is done in puppies 6 weeks old and at intervals of 3 to 4 weeks until 16 weeks old, with annual revaccination. To summarize, canine distemper virus is an enveloped single-stranded RNA virus of the genus Marbillivirus in the family Paramyxoviridae. It is transmitted via direct contact and aerosol droplets. The canine distemper virus has a tropism for cells with the signaling lymphocyte activation molecule and nectin-4 receptors, with the clinical signs being a consequence of infection of these cells. Laboratory diagnosis is needed to confirm canine distemper. Treatment involves symptomatic and supportive therapy. Vaccination is done in puppies 6 weeks of age at regular intervals until 16 weeks of age, with revaccination done annually.